Thunderdome Live is presented by Texas Cheer Liquor. And now, live from Oahu, Mike Taylor. What's up, bitches? How we boys doing? What's going on? We're back again. It's another one. We're starting to string these things together now, boy. Starting to feel like we're catching a groove here. We've sucked for the first six, seven of them. And then lately, like the last six, seven, all right, cool. But now I feel like we're kind of starting to groove here. It's time to take this damn thing off and a good time and got sponsors and everything now. So what's going down? It is absolutely Thunderdome live presented by Texas Cheer Liquor. I am Mike Taylor emanating to you, broadcasting to you live via the miracle of our wonderment that is loveyouhardtv.com on our YouTube channel, Thunderdome Live, presented by Texas Cheer Liquor. Uh, back in Texas, as always, is the biggest Puma, a.k.a. Samuel Ladon Freese of Glen Rose, Texas, and DJ LG from Parts Unknown, who I didn't even know until last week is not actually born in the United States physically, pays taxes in America, uh, but yep. was not born in America. Where were you physically born? Where did your mother do what uh, she had to do to have you come out? I think we'll, we'll, a, we'll just say a, a place called Yan Boo, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> You're Yan asking some uncomfortable Boo. questions. Yan Boo. Oh, he's fine. You're legal and stuff, right? Yeah. Are I you? Are you documented? Born yeah. abroad. Oh, okay. Okay. Born from abroad. Six seventeen. Started off with a manager. How you got, how we doing? Yeah. I know how we'll you're lay doing out on you for that one. Okay. Sorry. LG's distracted uh, already. Puma's been distracted all damn day. No, you've had my uh, full attention. I don't know what you're talking mm, about. No, I'm, I'm mourning for, uh, I'm mourning along with all the other fellow big cats out there. I just saw the news of Rayfield Wright's passing. Wait a minute. I didn't see that. Just Rayfield down. Wright just died. Yeah. The OG big cat. What are we doing here? Why are we even doing a show? Wow. That's unfortunate. Well, wow. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Tough the original the big, big cat. cat. The original big cat. Oh man, that sucks. That really does suck. I don't, I can't, I, I'm not going to be able to process that right now. Cause you just told me as we come That's on. That's why the I air, hit I you with it to shoot. That. Yeah. Did you just absolutely throw us off the rails from the top. Thanks. There goes my second mom joke I was going to issue to you. Now I can't because I feel bad. So, Good. Well, I'm glad it, yeah. I'm glad his passing uh, did provide some form yeah. of positive energy in the world. I hit uh, L, uh hit uh, Sam with some with some jokes about his parents earlier because yeah. he was distracted on the radio show. And your yeah. brother, yeah, you were Mike's distracted on your radio family. show. Yeah. Um, because you were we had Tiger playing, which I understood. In Major League Baseball opening day. Still I haven't need, watched just, a second need, of baseball. I need to keep your focus. So can you give me an hour and 15 tonight? Stars mm. are tied 1-1 in the first uh, against Toronto. Okay. It's, 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 it's going to be. But we have no, a guest. Fine. We have a guest. We do have a guest. Yeah. We do. So we'll be a fine. Repeat guest. We'll be fine. He's making, he's making show history here in our fledgling YouTube empire. Our first For the second guest. time. Yes, I'm saying yeah, he's our first yeah. ever repeat customer. It is Martin Strayer, a guy that has been a longtime Thunderdomer, coincidentally. But that's not the only reason why we want him on. We have him on because he's an interesting dude with a hell of a life story. And we had something I was going to, I've been planning on having him on anyway. Um, at some point, you know, I didn't want to like beat him down, have him come on twice in a month or nothing. I wanted to spread it out, but we had some big music news and the official music. I mean, we need to give Marty a title, right? Puma. He's what is he? The official of what? What is the official? What? Uh, the official sound engineer of Thunderdome. Okay. Live? It just, uh, we need something sexy. We need something. Yeah. Something that's too, no. that's too jargon industry jargon. Yeah. The like official, something badass. The official sound stylist to the rock or to something like that. Yeah. To the star. Not just song. rock. He was showing pictures That's of people saying, he's worked yeah. with before we went on. It's not just rock. It's all day. He's like, he's a, he's the music dude. <laughs> well, he's the yeah. music dude. Of, that can be the stand in for now. Okay. We'll figure it out. Dude. So, uh, 
Our guest tonight is Martin Strayer, who lives in San Antonio, but travels a lot because of his job. And he's getting ready to, he's traveling now, getting ready for a big tour coming up with his current band that he's working with. Uh, and he rejoins us tonight, a guy with an insane resume. Let's see if we can get all these, Martin. Let's see. I, I'm, I'll, I'll get some. So, I, well, okay. Currently, currently working with the chicks, getting ready to go do some stuff with them. That's right. Uh, that's probably a lifetime gig for you. I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but I mean, I, if no particular order, R Kelly, which I know you're most proud of probably right there at the top of your resume. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I am proud of it. This, uh, you should be. Yeah. He was awesome. He's great. This guy's a genius. He's a genius. I know. He's a, he's a yeah. Bad, bad guy, I guess in a lot of ways, but yeah. Yeah. He's a genius. Yeah. Uh, Madonna uh page and plant um marty's been in bands himself courtyard hounds i watched him play at acl several handful of years ago just all kind of nora jones all kinds of places and of course the one that's most nearly and dearly to me is soundgarden martin was yeah. a longtime member of soundgarden's crew and making yep. them sound good and he joins us tonight from his parents house in the state of pennsylvania they still i'm that's assuming yeah, the That's old man's correct. never going to leave Pennsylvania. He's there. What town? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a town called Lidditz. It's um, in Lancaster County. It's okay. where my dad's from. My mom was from Philly. Uh, okay. and where I grew up in Philadelphia. But uh, later in life, after I was out of the house, uh, they moved over, over here to Lidditz, where my dad was from. And coincidentally, I mean... <laughs> it's pretty, pretty crazy. But my dad went to or he didn't go to the same high school, but he was 11 miles away from this, this town. He was in Mannheim and, and these two brothers were in Lidditz and these okay. two brothers, Roy and Jean Claire, they developed and, and, and started the biggest sound company in the world. They created live sound industry. Um, okay. Uh, they, they, they did so much for, for live sound. And, uh, but these two guys were in Lidditz and, um, and now it's the biggest sound company in the world. And it just happens to be in where my, my folks live. So I, um, I took an excuse to come back here and, and I had to set up the chicks, uh, some of the tech, the, the, the new console I'm using and, um, get to see my parents as well. So. Okay. So, wait, so that's what I was going to ask you. Why do you have to go away the hell out to Pennsylvania to get your gear ready to go back to California? I guess I just got my answer because that company's right there in the neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and they have this cool. campus called Rock Lidditz, and they were very ambitious. Um, about 10 years ago, they built these two huge, basic, uh, basically arenas without any uh, seats where people could come in and set up their whole systems and and rehearse and everybody used to do that and they still do do it in los angeles or or other places but i never thought in a million years they'd be able to get you know these artists from all over the world to come to Lidditz, pennsylvania yeah. and rehearse and they have dude they, they've gotten they, i mean they, they've gotten taylor swift and justin bieber and ariana grande and they come here and they set up a hotel i mean They've done, they've done amazing. Anyone check it out. Rock lit. It's, it's okay. pretty amazing story. Claire so, brothers, Cla Claire global rock lit. Yeah. yeah. Forgive my ignorance. So what do you, your stuff's out there. Do you take, you take it back with you to California for rehearsals? That's right. We'll see. Okay, I, we'll, I wish we'll we could. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's all ships out tomorrow okay. to, uh, out to Los Angeles where we're going to rehearse because Right. The chicks will not. The chicks will not come to Lidditz. You know, <laughs> Taylor Swift, yes, but not those chicks. Hell no. <laughs> yeah, interestingly enough, they they. Yeah, won't okay, do it. very good. All right, very Maybe good. So, someday, what are they? But... What are the chicks doing? I know that um, they're playing. Would you say the last time we had you on, they're going to play a festival? Which well, one? They're going to. Well, they're playing Bonnaroo. Bonnaroo. They're that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and right, then cool. they're gonna they're gonna announce some other stuff in the fall, which okay, I can't cool. talk about. But we can You'll imagine what it is. 
Well, okay. yeah, and I'll I'll come back on once that announces in May, and because it, it's gonna okay, be a cool. big one. It's right on. Texas based. We can imagine what that might be, but um, we're gonna do a bunch of 30, 30 some dates uh, from June, mid June till uh, mid August. Take a couple Damn. weeks off, okay, and then go back out in the fall. And we'll be doing wow. all, we're doing we're doing two shows at Red Rocks, you know, um, cool. But show at the Gorge out in in, in Washington, a bunch mm -hmm. of great, really cool shows, all outdoor stuff. Okay. okay, cool. I'm obviously yeah. in Texas, right? I'm assuming places well, in Texas. Well, the Texas stuff's in the fall. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want you to get in trouble. Okay, very good. Well, that's yeah. okay. Well, that's why I just wanted to set that up to wonder. I was wondering why you're at mom and dad's house. So yeah, he still well, has a bunch of like, and I also like I like when you show off about you. You're not. I'm showing off through you, right? You're a humble yeah. dude. I like to show off through you, right? By the way, disregard the. Remember, whenever someone subscribes, you hear "Come on now, Spurs." Don't let that. <laughs> don't let oh, that good. throw you off. Okay, cool. So I subscribe like to our like shit. So thank I you, like Navarro, it. for subscribing. So, what? So, is, were you like in your? Are you in what used to be your room at your parents' house, or what do you? Uh, I'm you in my. Well, I'm in my bathroom because it's nice. Oh, you're in a take. bathroom. Yeah, it's <laughs> okay. quiet. I got a bunch of towels and. Okay, it's, it's cool, a good cool. Sound in here. All right, yeah. let's see. Uh, let's see, young Martin back in the day with some rock stars. Check this out, Puma, because he hadn't seen this. He was out of the room. Show Sam some of this shit here. He's gonna flip. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, you see Marty in the middle there, all 80s up there with that. Damn. Cool. Look who's got his hand. Look who's got her hand on him. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. The great Tina Turner. That's amazing. Yeah. She was amazing. I did I did two world tours with her all over the world. Um, an incredible lady and was very close with her. She's still, um, you know, she stays in touch with us, sends us Christmas cards and stuff. She lives oh, in Switzerland. Yeah, She's cool. unbelievable. Hard, hard Dude. working woman. Taught me a lot. Yeah. That was like prime Tina badassery when you were with her, when she was like apexing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, well, I did 2000, uh, 99 and 2000 with her. And then I did, mm -hmm. and then I did 2007, 2008. Okay, because she was getting close yeah. to retirement at that point by 2000. That was her last one. Yeah, cool. 2000, That's so yeah, badass. No, okay. Yeah. What, what else you got in the room there? We're playing show and tell. <laughs> it's Martin Strayer, the premier sound engineer on earth. That's what I'm going to roll with. Uh, here's, a, here's a fun one. I worked for Seal for quite a long time, and um, he, was, he was a great guy. He... Uh, we got we got close, man, and he. I lived at his house. He he and Heidi Klum bought this house up on the top of a. It was Linda Flora in uh, Los Angeles, and before mm -hmm. he moved into it, he wanted to record a record. So we moved all the band gear in there, and he's like, "Oh, you know, mate, you just live here, you know, and and, and we'll record this record." So I lived at the top <laughs> of this house in yeah. Los Angeles, and and, and re we recorded music every day and i mean it was it was wow. crazy it was tarantulas and snakes and shit up there and <laughs> seal was a great guy we we, we would, he would he loved to ski he would snowboard and i would ski mm -hmm. and we would go whether we were in europe or where you know anywhere close we would do gigs and if we could go skiing man we were going skiing and he was he and he would insist on paying for everything and it's pretty pretty awesome guy but this was one time we were in napa valley doing a show at a winery and I came on the bus to gather his his ear monitors and his ear pack. Hey, hey, hey! And I walk, hey, uh, I walk on the bus, and here's Steve Young, and I'm a huge, you know, I'm a huge sports fan. And Steve Young is a freaking Super Bowl champion, total stud. And uh, so this is a picture of that that moment. Holy shit! Damn, Look how young that's you are! Crazy. Look at Seal with, in the background. With random, random. Smiling. You're getting, you're getting photo bombed by Seal. That's, that's badass. Yeah, totally. that's so, that's so yeah. awesome. It's funny. I haven't seen these pictures in a while. They're, they're at my mom's house. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Here's, here's one more. I'll show you. Okay. All right. For some ahead. reason, I ended up working for a lot of women. Um, 
the, the shocking the big tall handsome no sound way. tag <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. the guy with the peter gallagher <laughs> eyebrows the power eyebrows works with all the women no way who would have guessed shocking you married a rock star oh how'd shocking. that possibly happen <laughs> well, this is why i worked for I, I did 330 freaking shows with this woman she was amazing Share. Damn. That's cool. You look really young. young. Yeah. yeah. How old are you the there? Thing, when is this? I'm probably uh, 33 or something. Wow. Puma is 37. Yeah. Hey, don't, 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 don't compare me at 36 <laughs> to that at 33. This is a hard 36. <laughs> Understood. You know yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Kick ass. And, uh, you know, I, I was a lot thinner then. And I flux, you know, as you get older. <laughs> Man, the weight the weight goes up and down if you don't really take care of it. But dude, working I, I on hear the that, road brother. with these artists, you know, working mm -hmm. on the road with these artists, you're yeah, you're working. You, you know, you're you're doing a lot of miles and and um, mm -hmm. definitely working off the calories. So anyway, there, there's a couple of photos that's badass. Around. All right, so let me let me tell this. I'll tell a quick story. Am I allowed to tell the story of when we got high on the bus? Sure. I mean, okay. already, yeah, we're fine. <laughs> we I don't already care. leaned into the headline <laughs> at least. Now, so Martin knows that, and I, I to this day, I'll be forever. I'll, dude, I'll never be able to thank you for that night. It's not a big deal to him because he's such a cool dude. But so Pearl Jam played in Dallas, and Martin wasn't working, but he just got tickets or got passes to go up. And he's like, yeah, because they're my friends. The Pearl. Yeah, right. Yeah. But it's still that's still it's funny because it's like I don't I'm not in awe of very few people. Michael Jordan. I met him. I was in awe of him. Um, it's basically it. Roger Staubach. I was in awe of him. I don't usually get in awe of people, but, you know, I'm not in, I wouldn't be in awe of guys in Pearl Jam, but that band's that's my that's my band. That's the band that's basically written the soundtrack of my life and continues to do so strangely yeah, enough totally. so martin's like yeah man i'm gonna let's go see pearl jam up in dallas i'm like okay cool i'm thinking we'll get you know, we'll have decent seats <laughs> it's got cool we'll probably have cool seats we'll go up and watch a show and drive home but i got up there realize no he doesn't mean homeboy means we're gonna go to sound check right and we're gonna sit in the in little engineering box in the middle of the floor where they run the show Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how surreal that was for me as a fan of that band all my life. And then to be in my early forties and now here I am watching them do sound check with nobody in the room, but them and us, the little, and me, I had no business there and yeah. watching Ed and stone and those guys interact with guys as they were testing mics and going over their set list and mm -hmm. I just I, I I stood there that night just in fucking awe and I'm, again I'll never be able to thank you enough for that man I just wanted to brag about that because I mean I, I just that was it for me dude everything else has been downhill ever since that was the apex of my life no, I'm kidding but of my of my music fan career that was that was the the highlight dude so I just again thank I know it's been a long it's kind of it was 2014 I think it's been a minute, yeah. but thank you. You know, it was very cool. There's a, hey, listen. And I got to meet Matt. Nothing. I got to meet Matt Cameron, for God's sake. Yeah. So, yeah, it was yeah, so, so the fly backstory, on the wall weird. Yeah, the backstory, I mean, Matt Cameron's a member of Soundgarden. I've been mm -hmm. working for Soundgarden since sure. 2010. And, and yeah. a lot of their employees are the same employees. And the Pearl Jam guys often came out to Soundgarden shows. And sometimes we we shared uh, bills. And we, we share a lot of the same employees. So um you know those guys are tight they're, they're family and that was yeah. an absolute pleasure to be able to do that for you and to watch your reaction and to know what that <laughs> meant to you look i'm the same i'm yeah. the same way i felt the yeah. same way about it um and but to be able to to do that for you was an absolute pleasure now, now what 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 happened on the bus you don't recall we wound up getting we wound up getting stoned on the chef's bus with the chef right i have i have smoked I pot you. with the head chef of pearl jam you're smoking which, yeah 
yeah, and yeah, oh yeah, and, and Soundgarden. Yeah, he's I think amazing. he was from uh, he was from New Zealand, New Zealand. as I recall. That's yeah, right. he was a Kiwi. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so Michael, I'll tell that Michael to the Glazer guy. is his name. He's a great dude. Mike Glazer. Yeah. Okay, very good. Well, yeah. shout out to Michael yeah. Glazer. That was amazing. Yeah, what's the old uh, Mitch Hedberg line? Like, I've never smoked weed with Peter Frampton, but I've smoked weed with a lot of people that look like Peter Frampton. Like, I've never smoked <laughs> weed with Pearl Jam, but I've smoked weed with a lot of people that look You're like chef, members. Man. Of, it's yeah, that's ass. awesome. That's yeah, really, yeah. that's a memory yeah, you yeah, never I forget. Get They're getting ready to go back with- out. Yeah. I was going to say, I got to oh, figure yeah, out a are. way to um, go see him again. But anyway, yeah, we even, we were sitting there in the bowels of the American Airlines Center in Matt right. Cameron. The Again, I'm a 47-year-old Gen Xer who, that was my, that was my scene, that Seattle scene. So here I am watching my band go through sound check. Then we go back to the back just to chill. We're sitting there having dinner and fucking Matt Cameron comes over and chills with you. And I don't have any idea what you guys talked about. I was just like, <laughs> I don't, I was just, <laughs> I was blown away, man. Yeah, what do you, even, what do you I add even to make that out conversation? What y'all were talking about? Yeah. I, nothing. No. I shut up and eat my salad. You were sitting nothing. right there. You don't remember. I anything. know I wasn't going to talk. What? Matt Cameron. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> so. Well, I remember telling his drum tech, Listen, because no. he, 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 his drum tech comes out, he's like, listen, Matt wants to come hang out. And I'm like, dude, don't, you know, Matt doesn't have to worry about it. We're having a great time. We just saw he sound. found out you were like, no. there. No. He's like, no, 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 Matt, Matt will be pissed if he didn't, you know, and I, I, I was touched by that. They love you, man. Dude, Matt's a close friend. All those guys are. We, we have a, I feel blessed, man. You know, uh, since, since literally the day after Chris passed away, you know, we have this text thread that um, are all the crew from Soundgarden and all the band. And, you know, it's about, you know, whatever, 25, 30 people. But it's a really, everybody wishes each other happy birthday or, you know, and just post, just text each other, you know, just great stuff. And it's been going. Now, that was in 2017 when that happened. So whatever it is now, and it's, it's, it's special. And Matt's a great, like the other day, dude. When Taylor Hawkins passed, I mean Taylor was a close friend of, of the Soundgarden family, yeah. and um, I texted Matt directly and was just like, "Dude, I just cannot believe this. What, mm-hmm. you know, I just feel awful for his family." And Matt was, you know, Matt gets right back to me. He's like, "Yeah, Taylor was a great dude. You know, we loved him so much. He, he, uh, he, he just all about like his family and his kids. It's just just devastating, you know, but." That's the type of guys those guys are, and uh, I, I'm real grateful for it, you know. Yeah. I, I, well, I was going to ask you about Taylor and then mm-hmm. move on to other stuff. I know that you mm-hmm. – because those bands are all so close. It's so yeah. strange. They're all different bands, yet they all – it feels like it's one big, huge music family, guys, from, especially guys from up – on the west coast on the north pacific guys northwest. from the northwest yeah the yeah. pacific northwest and on and on down the seaboard there and so i know that the i know that taylor hawkins death clearly affected you dude so i i just yeah. want to say i'm sorry that that happened and you you've gone through now you, you obviously were working directly with cornell and losing him the way you did and then Mm-hmm. Now to kind of indirectly lose another guy who's in that big music family from that, from all that, that, those, all those different bands from that side of the country, I know really fucking sucks. So that's it. Just brutal. Just brutal. And you know, it's, I've known Taylor since 1992. You know, I talk about being on that. I've, I've talked with you guys about being on that Peter Frampton tour. And, yeah. Um, but before I was on the Frampton tour, I was working for, Steve Perry, the yeah. former journey, the journey singer who was doing a solo tour. I think he had that. Oh, Sherry, you know, like mm-hmm. he, he, had, he yeah. had a couple of his, whatever, but he <laughs> couple was hits. Journey. Yeah. Couple. Yeah. And I was, I was out on the Steve Perry tour. It was a regional thing in the Northeast. And we show up in, uh, uh, Erie PA and I'm setting up. It's like probably, 17 degrees we're in this arena in erie pa right on the lake lake erie Mm -hmm. it's freezing cold i'm setting up this uh stage left monitor console and stuff and i hear this hey hey dude and i look over and here's a guy in his bare feet 
with shorts on, a t-shirt, all caveman looking, bow-legged, beard, whatever. And it's Taylor Hawkins, who I didn't know at the time, but his band, who uh, he was a drummer for this girl, Sass Jordan. He was drumming for this Canadian artist, Sass Jordan, and they were opening up for Steve Perry. Ah. This was their first their first day on the gig. And he's like, hey, dude, do you know where catering's at, man? You know, <laughs> dude, put some very shoes dude-like. on. Put, put some clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was very dude-like. He was a total yeah. dude. He was a surfer from Huntington Beach, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that's when I first met him. And we were the two youngest guys on that tour. And, and, we hit, and I had to take care of him and make sure his sound was right and everything. And they were the opening act. And that was always important. To, to take care and cultivate these these opening acts because you never know they're, they're going to yeah. become the next big stars and, and look what happened to him yeah and um so that's when i first met taylor 1992 and then you know i didn't see him for a while and the next time i saw him he was playing drums for Alanis morissette and that was a festival i was on uh i don't even remember who i was working for but um you know, big hug. Hey, dude, Reno, what's up, dude? I haven't seen you forever, man. You know, big hug. And yeah. mm-hmm. Every time I saw him, it was like that. Then, when I worked for, for Soundgarden for 10 years, I saw him all the time. Yeah. Because if they were within spitting distance of a Soundgarden show, they would all come out and hang out and hang out right behind me and just watch the show. And sometimes yeah. I'd even give them, like, ear packs and stuff to listen to mixes and stuff. And the same thing, dude what's up, Deuteronomy, you know, and just the All these forms guy. of dude. Nah. And then, yeah, and then, and then, you know, of course, uh, saw him at Chris's mm-hmm. funeral. And then the last time I saw him was at Chris's um, uh, tribute concert at the Forum, which was ridiculous. And he, we rehearsed for a bunch of days and he, he sang some songs and uh he was he was always asking me for advice about dude am i singing that too high or i'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're singing that too high just sing it like in your normal voice you know and he yeah he listened to me and gave me hugs and it's just just devastating for his family and his friends and he's just 50 years old man and it just it's, it's depressing depressing week last week i'll tell you yeah i haven't got sure. my head around it here's what i'm gathering man The people you work with love you. I mean, have you, I'm thinking you've never had beef with anybody because you make them sound great and you know what the hell you're doing and they rely on you. And these people all come off as super grateful to have you in their, in their scene, right? Your relationship with these people is, it's always great. Whether it's Tina Turner or. Soundgarden or anyone in the middle, Nora Jones, whoever else, R. Kelly even probably thought you were cool. Didn't you get like oh, yeah. summoned down to South America one time because R. Kelly just needed to have Deuteronomy come down to run his <laughs> shit? Listen, I appreciate that. And and you are on to something, but to me, and yes, I, listen, there's been some bumps in the road, but never ever with the big pop star some band Mm -hmm. members or whatever that might have thought they were uh you know some some teabag british guy once you know had it out for me but he was just a tool but no i uh (laughs) that checks out we're gonna know are you gonna tell us who that is or no well unfortunately he he passed away and um he was tina's tina's guitar player this guy john miles he didn't like you he he didn't want to use ear monitors you know, he wanted okay. to use wedges. Uh, his ears were all caked up with wax. It was disgusting. <laughs> I had some oh, God. God. fucking it, it British. Nasty. And he, yeah, and he just he he, he, he didn't like me because okay. everybody else liked me. Now, I, yeah. not, that said, I did I did you know six years of touring with this guy. Yeah, so like a Millwall that, thing. That was that was one guy. It's just an example of like, look, everybody, you can't. I, but, but you're very observant in, in saying that, like, I pride myself and one of my keys to success is getting along with every walk of life. Mm-hmm. And I've always been able to relate and, and make the pop stars feel at ease, not give them pressure, not make them nervous. 
I'm, you know, I, I smile at them. I get, I get, I look them in the eye. I, I bop my head to their music. I'm, I, I just relate yeah. to them. Yeah. And, um, and I, and I'm, I'm proud of that. And, uh, it's definitely a key to success, but yeah, the, then there's, then there's guys like John Miles who see that and, and there are jealous, you know, or whatever. And, um, you know, yeah. but generally, yeah, 99.9% of the, of, of the time, that's been a key to my success is being able to get along with all kinds of people, not just the bands and the pop stars, but the crew and the, 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 the production managers and mm -hmm. the, the stage hands that I meet every day that have to work and set, set up our systems and, you got to be nice to people and get along with people if you want to be successful in life. Cool. What's it like working with your wife? Is that what dynamic is that brought on? See, no, I don't know her well, but what I can tell, I think it's probably pretty easy on, on you. You guys are fine. Yeah. I mean, listen, there's nobody more professional or um, talented than my wife and her sister and her her bandmate the singer mm -hmm. um those three ladies are incredibly uh as much as any artist i've ever worked with intense and mm -hmm. it should better be right you know at the same time <laughs> pressure on you I, it's, it, it, well when i when i came into the situation which is uh, i call it the rescue mission uh, which I often did, you know, and I often still do. People call me for rescue missions, which means they're firing people and they're not getting along with their monitor engineer and and they want somebody that can do it right. And so I get called in to fix it. 80% of my career, I get called in on rescue missions. You're like the and, wolf in uh, Pulp Fiction. The wolf or the cooler? Oh, the, who was the wolf? The wolf's the one that had to help them get out of that when they shot that the kid in the head. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's, I'm the that's, wolf. I solve problems. Yeah. That's you, man. Well, it ca I came in and on a rescue mission with them, and the poor girls were just, they just weren't getting, I mean, uh, the way I approach things is super simple and point to point, get the audio to their ears clean and and rich and make a nice full mix for them and um yeah i you know it, it's they're tough and they can be tough but if you do it right you're in good you know you're in good shape right on okay so when that do you leave very... out of pennsylvania that Go was ahead, a very Bruno. diplomatic answer from my, like, I've worked, uh, uh, I've worked with alongside my wife at two different, uh, has, uh yeah. companies over the past. And when, when times are good, it's amazing. And to actually work together and accomplish real shit and actually get stuff done, it feels amazing to go home to yeah. Yeah. When you're butting heads and and you both go home to the same under the same roof and all you can think about is how uh, you know like it, it, either you know I worked as a data analyst at, in a recent life in a past life and my roommate wife worked as a uh, you know in a, a buyer for an ad agency and if I didn't give her so actually really similar to to sound for a musician if i didn't give her good data to lead her to buy you know good valuable time then i felt like i was i felt like i felt awful i felt like i had completely let them down so like in that sense i can wow. extremely relate to you i mean i can't imagine when when they don't get the right mix or when they come back at you and say you know you know what i like that's not what i you know that's not what i like or anything like that I know I took that way more personal than I would if I had, you know, if, if another buyer had said, you know, you said this spot was going to have a hundred dollar value and it was really a $25 value. You fucked me over. What, what's the problem? If someone random said that to me, it was like, okay, yeah, I messed up. I'm sorry. But when it was my wife saying that to me, that was way more of a, like, 
damn, and now I have to go home and spend the next 12 hours <laughs> just a, with a detente in the what living what room. What do you want for dinner? Couch. Yeah, chicken? Exactly, exactly, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll cook chicken like, now. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll cook. I'll cook that favorite dish that you love. Yeah, let me let me steam you some broccoli now. I know it's your favorite. Yeah, uh, Martin, I don't want to keep you all night, Holmes. We're gonna just dick around for like the next thirty minutes, so you can sit in and hang out with me. We can, we're gonna do our shit. I don't want to keep you all night if you got stuff to do I, and whatnot. I do have a question okay. for. I do have yeah. a question okay. for you, Marty. Before you take okay, off, cool. if you take off, what? No, I'm here. What is your like? What's your favorite genre of music? Because I hear you've worked with all these different musicians and all these different styles and very, very polar opposite styles at times. What's your personal favorite, and how does that play into how you mix, like how do you uh, how you mix music for genres that you really, really dig and enjoy in your free time versus how you mix the sound for like a pop artist that you're not as familiar with or a genre or, or like that, that, you know, e EDM dubstep band you were telling us about last time where you were mixing theirs. I mean, I yeah. just wonder if there's any difference in your process. I wish I could remember the name of that band. I still need to figure that out, but, um, I gotta say, so I was raised playing classical piano. Oh, hell yeah. And I was, and I was raised on the Beatles and Simon and Garfunkel, you know, that's what my dad listened to. And, um, and then I discovered Van Halen and Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix. And I just, I would say that that's probably the stuff that's my favorite. Uh, and, you know, which, you know, is also like Soundgarden and Alice in Chains. And, you know, those, that's my go-to. But um, I think, yeah, but I love, I love Mozart and Beethoven, and I, and I can hear all that stuff uh, in other genres of music. The pop music is actually so easy and simple. I mean, to <laughs> to mix, it's. Uh, I mean, it, I would it, assume that was the answer. Okay. Yeah, I would assume. Lay off I mean, Bieber, damn it! No, I mean it just it is what it is. I mean, it's not, bubble yeah. gum. It's it's sugar pop music. It should. Well, I and would literally, assume... they give you. They, they only want to hear, you know, they have, they have a Pro Tools guy that gets, sends you 16 tracks of, of music. It's like, and then, and then like the band, whatever band they have is just kind of copying that. So you're, it's just, it's easy, you know, you make their vocals sound good and assuming they sing and, um, you know, most of them, I mean, most of them do. Ariana sings everything and make her vocal sound good. Give her a nice mix of that, of those tracks. It's easy. Um, but my, my, my favorite stuff, like the favorite band I ever worked for was, was Soundgarden for sure. Like where I felt like this is my people, this is my music, you know? Yeah. And was that more because of the style of the music or just because of the people that were making the music and the family and the environment and everything that came? Uh, with but all of it, all, all of, of it, it. But, yeah. for, but for sure it was, it was the, probably the first time. No, I worked for Page and Plant, which was basically Led Zeppelin, which I love Led Zeppelin. Um, I worked for the Eagles, and I love the Eagles. I worked for Paul McCartney. I love fucking... But with Soundgarden, I think it was the combination of the of these are my people. This is my generation. This is fucking Soundgarden, dude. I yeah, mean, this, this is, is my <laughs> message. <laughs> yeah, it was just was it, me, it blew yeah. my mind. It it was it, it was the my most my most favorite uh gig i ever had you know very cool yeah as a fan i i, I was i would have guessed he would say that i think that's why he and i kind of hit it off you know like well you that's could how take we me... did hit it off yeah I you could take say on the, on air hey i was wearing i was in the 7-eleven and some dope came, i don't know what you were you were talking about some crankhead, some <laughs> doper, dope. You're up, you're like, yeah, I'm in there with my Soundgarden shirt, and some dope comes up to me and asks me for money or whatever. I don't know what, but I was like, and then I, I that's when I emailed Taylor. I'm like, dude, you like Soundgarden? And, Fuck yeah, uh, I'm a white kid from the inner city in okay. 1992. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, that's that's how our relationship started. Yeah. So, so you could you could take me into a room and we can meet Paul McCartney, right? And it would be very cool. And we could go watch Paul play, blah, blah, blah. 
You take me a room and we hang out with mud honey. I'm going to have a hard on for the for 60 minutes. <laughs> exactly. Because exactly. that music is what I, you know, I love country music very much. I'm from Fort Worth mm -hmm. for God's sake. Um, mm -hmm. I like all genres of tunes, but that's, I'm with you, that, that, that nine, eight, late eighties and early nineties rock grunge scene. That is my wheelhouse because those yeah. guys, those kids wrote my life. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's why that's I always agree. been with me all these years. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm going to, we're going we're gonna to talk about, you just want to hang out and do shit with us. We're just going to screw around now. Sure. Yeah. Pay bills and stuff. We have a bunch of sponsors since you were last on. Nice. Yeah. We're moving little, on up. <laughs> you, look at this, you see a little logo here in the right corner over Puma's head. Yeah. It's the title sponsor of this, of this television show. It's, Texas cheer liquor. See if you can oh, chug that beer good. while I do the spot. Put it back on Puma. Go back to it's Puma. Not a Ready? Beer. It's it's rose bubbly rose. <laughs> well, dude, chug. what are you doing drinking rose out of a can? It's way more alcoholic than beer out of a can. I was gonna, ready, I was gonna have you chug that. Rose. Oh, no, I'm being efficient. Out yeah. of a can? I'm on He's a rose a, kick. Just plow through. Uh, We've got bills. I got to pay. send you some. I have to send you some uh well, I don't want to mess up the bit, so. No, no, no. 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 You know what? No, we're not messing. No, no you I know like what? You. You're going to send me something. This I'm listening. bullshit. Hang on. Yeah, when you told Someone, him. Someone's yeah. chugging beer. Don't go. Hang on for a second. Somebody's chugging beer. Hang on. Hang yeah, on. Yeah. I'm going to send you some Gaslighter Rosé. Oh, hell yeah. Up hell yeah. Shit. I'm uh, right. I'm really excited to hear right. that one live finally. All right, we got to do 60 yeah. seconds for Texas Cheer Liquor. The title right. sponsor of this television show, mm -hmm. and without if and Puma's going to do it. You ready? What are we really? You really want me to chug? You're going to do the live? No, I'm going to chug my oh. shit because I don't want because you you're drinking rose. Pinky That's easy. Pinky yeah, out. I'm going to put this on for sixty seconds. All right, I'm ready. I'm rolling. No, ready, Puma? You're about to do the damn live spot. You ready? Talk Where's about my how wonderful. Where's Who okay. the fuck do you need any coffee? Right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Yeah, go. All right. Thank you uh, to Texas Cheer Liquor, our title sponsor here on Thunderdome Live, as Mike chugs some of the glorious product that you can absolutely find at one of their four locations, soon to be five, five, yes, correct. Uh, Mr. My Man, Mr. Uh. Singh, who, uh, again, compliments on the hookup coming. Uh, you talk about hooking up with some rosé. Mr. Singh has... Excellent selection of rosé, as I have recently learned, along with all any kind of tequila you can find. My two right, favorite nice go-to staples. Way to yeah. go, Puma. Yeah, you did spread it. all across the city. Yeah, Texas Support cheer local. liquor, bitches. Support That's right, local. Mr. Support Singh, San business. Antonio based. Woo! I thought you had a damn beer. I was gonna get you to do it. No, I would have chugged. I would have still chugged the rosé because Mr. Right. Singh might have appreciated you doing the live read more than me. I think I did okay though. You did fine. Thank Absolutely you. fine. You. Yeah, yeah, you did great. And they've got everything in there from super cool hipster rosé in a can. Correct. To, all the way to, to Bud Light, <laughs> baby. All the way. Dude, dude, you can go in there and get you a big fucking case of Miller High Life if you need to. As you know we else? saw evidence. We did see that. Yeah. My very good friend went and got some michelada in a can and some Miller High Life. That's just your yesterday. ass. Hey, I'm not a bum. When I go to Texas <laughs> Cheer Liquor, I get a six pack of Lone Star Tall Boys, and I get my canned yeah. rosé. I'm both. I'm right. You know me. I'm, I'm right. The, I'm from both worlds. My Beethoven, Beethoven on Tuesday, Soundgarden on Wednesday. Was judge, Absolutely. Mom side was the redneck. Yes. I got the best Absolutely. of both worlds. Get your ass in there, and they also have a humidor in there for you smokers. You told me about that. I'm excited to go you hang out. Get your ass get a good in the one. All of his shop yeah. have humidors in yeah. there in the back. All right. So thank you to Texas Cheer Liquor uh, for you, doing Singh. the deal with it. Mr. All right. Singh. LG, do you have that thing that uh, the official poster maker of our show tweeted out earlier? I wanted to show Martin this. This is badass. Yeah, I might have something like that. Let me okay, see. cool. Oh, is so, this, uh, Martin, what you told me not to look at earlier? I told you to look at it. Look, you told no, you, you told me not it. to look at it during the segment because I would be completely distracted. Oh, yeah, this is it. Yeah, yeah. this is it. So here's, here's the deal. By the way, subscribe to this show. Like this show. Comment on this show. We're going we're gonna to read some of the comments here in a minute. Um, so the barbecue, I, I doubt Martin will be in town. He'll probably be touring or out 
gig in but on, on yeah, yeah well it's not till june 11 what are you doing june 11 you probably got a town that's when we st- we start yeah we start the middle yeah of so like uh, june, concert june, june 11 yeah june 11 is the official uh this is the barbecue every year that we do um with all of our listeners and stuff where we raise money for the salvation army the boys and girls club that the salvation army has on the west side of san antonio right there by woodlawn lake we raise money for them every year this is technically the spring, even though it sounds like the summer. It's June 11. Right there at the facility in the field is, the, is this year's barbecue. And so we have a guy named Martin Leal. Martin Leal. Good Martin, dude. Another Marty we know. Very good dude. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he makes uh, – he's an amazing artist. He works for the Spurs and teams all over the state and celebrities and, like, makes pictures for them, draws them. Actually, have you ever seen, have you happened to see one of the posters? We've, we've had a couple of these now that Martin created for that barbecue. Here, I'll send and they're you just one, Marty. Unbelievable. Let me see. Let me see. And they're okay. very detailed. Send Martin one. They're very detailed. Everything that he puts on that poster is, is, a, is a reference to me and my show. It means the world to me. So much so, dude, that in May, I'm going to get something tattooed on my shoulder that Marty put on the poster last year. So I saw you just yeah. got a tattoo. I did. I'll, I'll talk about that here in a little bit. <laughs> do you, have, you don't happen to have a copy? Hang on. I'm a, do you have a copy of last year's poster, Puma? I wanted to show Martin. That's what this. I was trying to find. Yeah, I was going to send it over to him. Hang, I got something here. Uh, da, 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 da. I thought I had Sorry, it I got, saved for I got, quick got, reference. I got a lot of pictures of Miller High Life in here. I got to go up and find this. See, da, 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 da. Oh, here, 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 here. Let's see. I think I've probably seen it on your, your tweets. And oh, your... there we go. Probably yeah, have. Just look at this. This will be easier. That's last year's. Oh, yeah. And all that references shit that we do. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show I'm going to show something. I love it. On, on that poster. Killer. Here, come back to me, Lawrence. So he knows how much I love Pearl Jam. This is how detailed this guy gets in, in doing our poster. So he took a lyric from a Pearl Jam song. And, you know, I got, I got divorced last year, and I'm in, I'm, I went through a transition phase in my personal life. And so there is a Pearl Jam tune called I Am Mine. It was on a record that came out like a 99. Um, and there's a song called... Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't Yield. It was Riot Act. Oh, Riot Act, yeah. Yeah, and there's a song off the Riot Act record called I Am Mine. And one of the lines is, I know I was born, and I know that I'll die. The in-between is mine, right? No, I, I, I can't control being alive. I can't control. At some point, I'm going to die, period. But all the shit in between birth and death, I can control. It's mine. Mm-hmm. That's an Eddie lyric from a tune called I Am Mine. Mm-hmm. It sounds like an old pirate swashbuckling tune, you know, but... Mm-hmm. So Martin took a took that line I am the in between is mine and put it up can you see that Let's see if I can focus that on the camera mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's in Japanese and and I've had two people from Japan confirm that this says basically it says the in between is mine I'm mm-hmm. going to control between birth and death and Martin put that on his poster that he made for our show last year it meant so much to me because he knows how much I love Pearl Jam, and he took that line that in between his mind and put it on there in Japanese. So I am going to get that tattooed on my shoulder in May because that's how nice. much that means to me, man. So, and he's currently working on this year's poster, and he put a little, he tweeted out a quick little seven second video earlier. DJ LG, you got that ready to roll? Yep. So he tweeted this out earlier. This is, he's working on this year's poster, which will be in color. So it flashed out that tweet. So Martin, there's Willie. That's <laughs> Jeff. Tra- See that? Okay. So that's Bob Saget. Do you know the? I say uh-huh. Bob Saget on the air because I tried. I, yes. Yes. My oh, yeah, first yeah. program director told me to stop cussing so much, so I replaced. Damn it, right. Helen ass with oh, Bob yeah. Saget. Yes. I know. So Bob, I and because we, because the great Bob Saget just died, he's on going to be on the. There's Willie. Obviously, uh, I love Willie. Well, don't don't undersell the fact that Jeff Trailer is hoisting the Conference USA Championship trophy, but it's just a flaming fish because he said hotter than fish grease. Yeah, another like, one of our incredible. shows. We're hotter than fish grease, 
And that building there says, I love you hard. That is, that's on an old abandoned parking garage in downtown Austin. I don't know who did nice. that, Martin. I've seen I that. You yeah. have, have you seen that? I don't know what that's about. I have no idea if it's actually about me or not, but tell me, that's my fucking doesn't show matter. slogan. Are you yeah. kidding yeah, me? Yeah, it doesn't, you're right. It doesn't matter. It, like, we're what claiming are the it. Odds? It doesn't matter. What, what's the coincidence that somebody climbs up to that thing, writes that on top of that damn building, and so Martin's oh. going to take that, and that's just a quick preview. It's a small section of this year's barbecue poster. Look at that! Look how good the Bob Saget is. Yeah, it's insane. It's incredible, oh, dude. The the color, the Willy one is in all of it. Willy, the, that's yeah, Willy all. in like 1965 or something. Yes, yeah, yeah. So kick ass, man. So th yeah. that's a shout out to Martin Layall, who's work. I cannot wait to see the full poster. I'll probably tear up when I see the damn thing. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get a tattoo I'm gonna get a tattoo of Checks that out. that's that Pearl Jam line. All right, so you've mm -hmm. seen the one I got yesterday. Mm -hmm. If I can. Oh, hold on. How do uh, I do we'll, this? We'll, I, that's see. your first there tattoo, you right? Second. Oh, but it's the first. I, I've got one on my back. Ex-wife's nickname. <laughs> the kids have asked me, Daddy, are you? What are you gonna do with that? I'm like, nothing. I'm gonna keep it. It's fine. So that right there, it's hard to see. Uh, but basically, and it's got, it's got adhesive, it's got adhesive, adhesive, ad, I get a hard word for me, adhesive, adhesive. on it. Adhesive. Adhesive. Dude, you, okay, adhesive. I'm not crazy. Like multiple times on the radio show today, I you said adhesive and I, in Ad my mind, adhesive. I was thinking it was some kind of like hippie lotion adhesive. that she had sold you. It's adhesive lotion. And I'm just adhesive. like, what the hell? Adhesive. It's adhesive. Yeah. Okay. All right. It, this is right after she did it yesterday. It's hard to see. It I saw little, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It says little darling. Okay. Beautiful. His so nickname. Yeah. It looks like Great it's totally, song. it's totally janky. It's totally, it's like a prison tattoo, but it's, it's in George girl. Harrison's handwriting. It's so bad. Oh, and so, so my bad first, bad. my see. firstborn, my two firstborn daughters, love the Beatles and my second born kid who's 21 years old loves the Beatles. And so to show, to pay tribute to, and her favorite Beatle is George Harrison. So my Sammy, my 21 year old went and had in George Harrison's handwriting, here comes the sun put right there in that part of the, uh, of the forearm with a little, and, and if you go and look at the lyrics that George Harrison wrote that day, when he wrote that on paper, you can go, you can go Google it's online. He put this little goofy looking sun underneath at the, at the bottom of the page. So my, my 21 year old had, here comes the sun tatted right there on the forearm with a little, the little goofy looking doodle sun. My oldest daughter, who's 24 to show support for her, her sibling then went and got the same tattoo, but had, but wrote, it's all right. And so what they did was this is just to, to show their bond as siblings. This is their two arms together. Can you make that out? Uh, there you go. So when yeah. they when you put their arms together, it says, "Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. It's do, do, all do, right." Do, 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 do. So I surprised them uh, as their daddy by going and getting "Little Darling," which is the next lyric Little to Darling, George Harrison's tune. Oh, well, there we go. A long, long, long yeah. How about that? Man? So that's what I have on my forearm forevermore. It very. It Little looks Darling. very prisony. <laughs> But the, that, is to, that is Outside, to show love without, for my kids. Without context, it looks extremely prison yard, <laughs> like toilet bowl wine mm. tattoo. They call, they call me Little Darling here on the stale. Me. Little Darling <laughs> is out up in Gatesville. But no, See, with the with beautiful, the context, beautiful thing, and he's going to shit on it and compare with, me to a prisoner. Again, without oh, context, yeah. you agree <laughs> it looks very different. It than, does. Then the the story and narrative behind it when it you does. provide the context. Yeah, it does. Looks I, like I, like George Harrison is my favorite Beatle. I That's agree. Like, me I too. Love, and he like, is mine too. But, yeah. but I would not look at that tattoo and instantly, even me, I wouldn't instantly think, oh, that's George Harrison's handwriting. Like, I'm not that level of super fan. Like, I, I would, my first thought, I mean, I, I'm country as fuck. I still call... Stuff, darling, daily, hourly. Like, that's what I go to. Like, sure. little darling, my darling. Like, uh, that's a the word Texas I use. boys. We say Tell sweetheart and darling. 100%. Mm -hmm. We say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. We hold doors. Yeah. It's your ass. But I wouldn't immediately, I wouldn't have even realized that was George Harrison's handwriting, which makes it so much, it, 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 
it provides humor on one level, but it also makes it so much fucking cooler once you hear the context of it. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's re- and to think that George Harrison literally just doodled that son while he was probably stoned out of his mind. And you now mind. have yeah. it on your body. That's pretty <laughs> cool, dude. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Holmes. Yeah. So, well, and I, fa- I didn't cool. tell my kids I was doing it, so I FaceTimed them yesterday from the tattoo parlor. And look, look what Daddy did. They I just can't imagine how they felt, dude. That's dude, so cool. I, yeah. And then you passed even, out. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> then I passed out. <laughs> Stop listening to the show, man. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. here's what happened. And then he threw up okay. all the Keep all in over. mind, I'm on Hawaii time here. I'm five hours behind you guys. And I'm, here, I'm drinking a beer at 4 o'clock in the fucking afternoon. Um, so what happened was, what ha- ha- so I get off the air well, at 3 o'clock local was. time. Well, ha- ha- I get off the air at 2 o'clock. I wanted to get a really good artist to do this, and she's awesome. She's one of the most in-demand tattoo artists in the state, certainly on this island. And so you have to book her months in advance if you're going to get in there to the room to be with her. And you basically, whenever she tells you, okay, I have an availability here, boom, that's when you have to show up. So I had a very tiny window to get from the station all the way up to her office, get the tattoo, and then get get it done in time to go get my kids from school. And I forgot to eat lunch. And I had not, I guess I had had too much coffee, had not drank any water, and I got dehydrated. So what happened, apparently when you get a tattoo, I mean, you even a small tattoo like mine, you see what you're doing? You're making me backpedal and explain this whole fucking story. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> I'm glad he made you do it and not me. Because <laughs> it was so inevitable. You, it was okay, inevitable. I know. Yeah. You're, yeah. I mean, getting a tattoo, I mean, you're doing trauma. You're doing trauma to your Again, body. I mean, I live in the glass glass house. I have no I know, idea you don't what have, that feels like. She's but it's literally to... carving. It, she's carving into my arm. My body's like, well, okay, what the fuck? You're not supposed to carve into me. So your body reacts to the pain. <laughs> and because I was... I guess I had an empty stomach and I was dehydrated. My body's like, huh, that's pain and we don't have any food in our belly. Yeah, let's just puke it. I almost vomited in the place. She had to like lay me down all the way in the chair like I was in a fucking hospital. So you can imagine me, I got my arm like this because it's, it's still wet and I'm laying down and they somebody had to go get me like some electrolytes to drink because I was... I, I had a, sh- my you sugar need, levels just you need an electrolyte. <laughs> and I was, I was just losing it, man. I almost lost my shit in there <laughs> and fainted. I thought I was going to Ralph. I, mean, I told her, I said, Hey, Jen, I gotta, I gotta go. I may need to go to the restroom. She goes, I, Mike, I, I, you can't, you not, I've got to finish this in, lunch up. buddy. <laughs> Locked in. Hold She's like, just let me together. finish this. <laughs> Basically, it was, it was quit being a pussy and sit there and let me finish. And you're because she's covered in tats. And I look what I'm getting a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm glad you said like, like dude, again, like, yeah, yeah. I live in a glass house, so I can't right. say that. But the oh, ink it's that not my like she's wife putting has. A, I, mean, I know. It's not like she's doing a fucking hawk <laughs> across my back. She's getting you know? a good chest piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She does do nipples, by the way. She was telling me oh. that's the hardest. Women go in there and get shit around their nipples, like sunbeams and star, turn yeah. their nipple into a star. I hear that's really Ooh. painful. God, why would you do that? No, fuck that. Not that this I was would painful enough. know anybody this that is has a, that, but I hear it's really painful. Right. This is a tiny tattoo, but it's the side. I mean, that's a tender part of your arm there. Like, I, I, I'm going to get one in May. I'm going to get one right, right here, and it won't be a big deal. I'm going to get a big one. That fucking hurt because there's no, it's just skin and skin and blood. There's no like muscle there, you know. Yeah, so see, it that's hurt. What scares me because the first one I want is like the outline of Texas, like Clint Dempsey has around his on elbow. your elbow. But I've well, I, you got meat I, there, I, though. But I don't, I don't, dude. I've got little mm, pea shooters, it, like, like me. Um, be, oh, shit. Taylor, I got you beat. I got you beat on chicken yourself. arms. What's that? I said. What you say? Imagine if you pooped yourself. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, no, you're just, you're there. You're not going, like, it, it could have been way worse. Like, all, all things all things considered, it could have been I, way worse. Yeah, you, you, you I, held I thought together. I was going to hurl. Yeah. yeah. Had I puked in that woman's shop, they would have had to clear the whole fucking shop because you got to keep that place sanitary. It's, it's like, not a big to keep, place. <laughs> they serve oh, it's not bagels big. It, right no, next to where you That's right, would... and it's got to stay <laughs> hospital clean, so that would have been a disaster. Yeah. I'm not familiar so with, with with tattooing, but so how do they? How does she like? Do they 
Do they make something and put it on you first and then she traces it or? Yes. Yeah. She takes an yeah. outline of what you want and makes a print of it. And then like puts this out, clean, rubs it off. Like you're going to get a shot with alcohol and then puts mm -hmm. the print on your arm. Right. And then slowly peels it off and makes a little in makes the print on your body. And then they go over it. Real. And I got, I got handwriting. So that's hard to do. Yeah, it looks hard. Right. Yeah, yeah, you have to get it just yeah, it looks right. Really hard. See, Steph, yeah. my wife, she has a piece right here on her whole, like you know, inside bicep. I bet that that's is, painful a, too. It's a watercolor. Originally, it was a watercolor painting that her grandma did on a piece of china, you know, West Texas china, and then she just took the plate into the tattoo artist, but it also had her uh, Nana's signature on it. And Steph wanted to get the signature to go along with it. And the tattoo artist basically said, like, it's not, I, we can do it, but, you know, with the beauty of that, because it's like a rose petal or it's like a rose branch with different, uh, you know, flowers coming off of it. And then the signature right. would have ended up being like down here. And he basically told her, like, to do handwriting on that part of your arm, it's 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 not going to feel it's not going to feel good, and it's going to be really hard to keep your arm still enough to get the handwriting accurate <coughs> because it's going to be so tender. And so she ended up not doing the handwriting. That's why when I mm. like I know I know we give you shit because it's not a big piece, but the fact that it is very very specific handwriting that yeah. uh you know was yeah. being copied like i yeah. bet it i bet it i i it's fun to give you shit but i also completely understand that was that probably didn't feel the best yeah. thank you dude all right uh this part of the show is brought to you by rnr auto glass one of our longtime thunderdome partners janet and rick and those folks over at rnr kick ass a poodle san antonio company uh, they're right by the airport. Like if you need glass fixed in your car, you're not going to be able to pick chicks up or have any sex. If you have cracks in your windshield, that's a bad look. Makes you look like an irresponsible guy who doesn't take care of stuff. Don't be riding around the city with crack windows. Go get your windows fixed at r, &R auto glass. Go in there and mention me. They will give you a tailor especial. Go get the hookup. They're right by the airport. Let's say you're going southbound, right? On 281, you take, you exit Nakoma Boulevard, you take a left on, take a right on Nakoma, they're right there on the left hand side, just across 281 from the airport. It is RR Auto Glass. Not only are they the official auto glass company of Thunderdome Live, they're the official furniture provider of Thunderdome Live. Bitches. A good looking bookshelf. <laughs> yeah. And we are all former uh, customers, by the way. LG's been in there three times. I've been in there twice. I'm about Martin, to be in there. Are you going in? I'm about to be in there for my second time. I've had the boss windshield the replaced. The oh no, the boss is good, but Steph's car has a busted windshield now. Did I not? I yeah. thought I told you about that. Someone just no, uh, again. You didn't tell me that. Okay, well, I I I instantly realized why I didn't tell you because you're just gonna blame it on my neighborhood, and that was not the case at oh, all. We were some we crack were. Kid to you or something no again i knew that's what would happen break we were actually okay you, you'll be happy to know we were in south town when I love someone Southtown. took a uh iron bar to her windshield <laughs> and now have we have a crack <laughs> three quarters of the way across. well he was he was trying to break into pig liquors down there and it, it oh, uh, sideways pretty fast yeah and so yeah we'll be at r and r here very shortly right Martin is a former customer of R and R Auto Glass. What was that one, Marty? Like um, stepson back to the tree, something like that. That's exactly right. <laughs> stepson back into a tree, <laughs> yeah. blew out his whole back window. Is F one fifty, and um, and I, I immediately I was with him right there, and I called Taylor. I'm like, dude. I, what's mm -hmm. your glass company you always talk about? <laughs> yeah. He goes, boom, here you go. He texted me the, the, the name, the address, tell him I sent you. We literally drove from where we were to R&R, &R, got it sorted. I mean, unbelievable. They're great, great San Antonio company, great customer service, and just nice people. And Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, great sponsor for you, and, and uh, you I can't me. recommend yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, they're awesome.
There it is. There's a customer now on yeah, our live spot tonight, a, bitches. That's not What's even up? someone that's being paid to tell you. Like, that's, that's <laughs> the authenticity of nah, their they were all, they like, made, they're great. They made our life easy. Yeah. They made yeah, our life they easy. I know I said cool. it last time, but they were able to match within the hour perfectly the original boss decal windshield straight that's like crazy. it was from the factory. Yeah, like, so if even if you have a Ford Raptor or something that has very <clears> specific... <throat> When you know windshield decals, they're going to get exactly what it looked like before that, which Absolutely. is the most value that I, right. I mean, that I can preach to. All right, you want to see this chick who did my tattoo? LG's got video of her. She's really, really great. And yeah, let's see. She looks very like she's the typical chick you'd think would be doing tattoos in Hawaii. Oh, okay. Genuine well, stereotype. is her name. All right, yeah, LG okay. Rack. This is me. In it. I, now keep in mind, I'm I just gotten the color back in my skin. I'm a little disheveled, kind of embarrassed because I just almost puked all over this girl's shop. So this is me and genuine uh who did my tattoo yesterday. She's very sweet about telling not to me be how confused with 90s R and B star genuine. This not is genuine, genuine, genuine. Yeah. And look, she's so sweet trying to tell me I'm a pussy. So this is yeah, this is how it looked. Right, DJ. Yo, I got my tattoo and I almost puked all over this woman's <laughs> uh, setup because apparently Ooh, you are when you put your body through a little bit. Of yeah, I was, mode, I was almost, struggling I almost here even. Yeah. But, but, I, but, but you see what ha they're going to make fun of me. So what happened to me is common, right? <laughs> it does happen. I wouldn't yeah. say it's common, but it does happen. You, um, you're probably just suffering from some low blood sugar. Big time. So Ooh. yeah, she had to go like get me Electrolytes and late suffering from vaginitis. Like, oh, bullshit. So anyway, we're glad that you did it. Anyway, this is genuine. She is one of the cool people on Oahu and did my tattoo. Check it out. It didn't hurt at all. I said so tiny. I'm gonna I'm gonna catch up because it's like really tiny. You know, dude. You what's your problem? Know. <laughs> but it didn't hurt at all. Oh yeah, really. It was after we were done. Where I'm like, uh oh. Oh shit! So all of a sudden, yeah. anyway, but it looks really good. I appreciate it. You're right, very so welcome. Is, when you come to see me in Hawaii, come see Genuine. She's a but. You need to book her like like 14 years in advance. She's in demand. All right. <laughs> At least two. At, At least, least two. two. Okay. So I'm gonna come back and and eat a steak before I come back because I don't think I was I didn't have any food in my belly. Is what happened. Yeah. Definitely so, want to have a good meal. Yeah. Next time I'm gonna. And be hydrated and well yes, rested. I was it's none of those you. things. Yeah. I've had my kids for 10 days. I've been none of those things. So I'll, I'll time it better. But anyway, thank you so much. He's never one of those. Right, yeah, cool. No, All right. never. <laughs> Everything she listed, you're like, yeah, no, I'm, he's, I'm actually, he's this never is a that. really bad time for all of those things. Like, I'm eating. Yeah. I'm eating I haven't eaten in eight days. hours. <laughs> yeah. I'm a single man now, guys. I live alone, so I don't. I, sometimes I forget to eat and drink properly. So just I got beer an though. Electrolyte drink, uh, drink an electrolyte every morning, like I do. That's what I should. That's what drives me. Pedialyte or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Holy exactly. shit! That was that. That was hard, man. That was that was difficult. But I, I love the thing. It looks great, and that's the work she did. And to be able to get uh, George Harrison's perfect handwriting down. That's. Not, it's not awesome, Taylor. It's an yeah, awesome I'm pretty tattoo, jealous. bro. Pretty Thanks, jealous, man. man. Appreciate yeah. you boys hard. Thanks, Holmes. Yeah. All right, so there's that. What's uh, what's what else is on our agenda tonight? LG, what do we? LG's well, we like to light the candle. Producer in training. Yeah, we had let the fucking LG, candle. Yeah, this LG's is cool, Martin. You can watch us light our candle that the voodoo lady that we had in a few weeks ago brought. Yeah. Us. The one that caused me to get an eggplant shape and color. Because you questioned bruise. her. I question. So, oh, dude, yeah. I don't want to see that again. No, it's over. It's gone. Okay. We're past that. We're we're not we're not going down that, that road gnarly, anytime. Man. It was bad. It was bad. Yeah. Trust it. It was. It really killed my social life quite a bit. It was bad. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to bang you. Like look over and see. I can imagine it's your poor wife's enough. like, nah, let's it's just hard watch enough. TV. And then you add that, and it's pretty much a deal breaker. Yeah, pretty much, home. Golly. All right, you want to do some, want to oh, do some, re read box. some shit, LG? I want to read some yeah. shit. Yeah, after I like these. Uh, yeah, read. Uh, we got to get okay. on. All right, I'm going to rack these up, get them lit. I'm rack them. Protection. We don't is light lit. these. Our show's cursed forever. By the way, while he's lighting this, let me say this. We have a couple of major announcements for this, whatever. The, what, what do you call this? Is this no, a show? We just dick around. Me. 
It's like a video podcast, I guess. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. We're our video Basically. podcast. We're gonna have two more big announcements on Tuesday. Well, but possibly. you know what these are. I think possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Was, no, okay. we are. We are. Okay. No, we are. I'll text I possibly you. Possibly know are, them, or we're possibly announcing okay. them Tuesday. Please you know text them. me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll text okay. you in a minute. But we have two massive announcements on Tuesday. Uh, that just we started doing this damn thing. What are we on episode 18 now? Yes. Something like that. Golly. Yeah. I mean, obviously we're not so far. It's not touching the radio audience, but I mean, I, mm. we keep getting people, we keep getting cool guests on and keep the content rolling. This thing's oh, yeah. going to take Just off. Just wait till we bring my dad on. That's going to be what causes us. To, <laughs> to That'd be really... fine. Yeah. Is we're talking about having cool dad. Yeah. It's Mike wants it to be in the works. I'm Needs trying to, be, to yeah. keep that horse in the stable. So we'll Needs see. We'll nice. see. Yeah. We'll see. Martin, you ought to do a damn podcast on your, just your freaking career, man. And the stories you've got seriously, or, Listen, or write, man. write some shit down, man. I write it down. I got it. I got my notes going. When you told okay. me a couple weeks back, you're like, dude, you should write this down. I actually looked yeah. at my phone. I'm like, I got a notes thing going on it. But since we did that last one, I've kept listed tons. I've listed tons of shit. This is my format. I'm here for you and your and Thunderdome and your people. I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want the hassle. I want to, I'm with you. And so whenever okay. you want me to come on, I mean, I, okay. we've got, I've got endless amounts of shit we could talk about. So. Right. That's like every time there's music news, I think I bet Martin's got a, got a take on this based on just some shit he's, he's seen. Music news, you know? you know, this, where, where is that? There you go. We we Repeat. haven't talked page, about about the, that yet. Page plant night ninety five. That thing's in good shape. Yeah. What are you doing remember, wearing that thing? There's a particular incident with Jimmy Page that we need to talk about, but we we save that for the next one. Oh, are that's you what sure? You call it, that's are you what sure? You call I think tease. so. I think so. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's what you yeah, call yeah. a tease. You can tease Absolutely. it. You can tease it. It's pretty heavy. It's it's a big one. Okay, cool. Let's get into that. Remind me to get into the Jimmy Page story with Martin next time he's on, Sam. Absolutely. Does it? I feel like I don't want to pigeonhole Marty into only, like, we only talk to Marty after there's massive death or we want to talk to him. Yeah, right. That's just coincidence. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The coincidence, but let's not keep it as a recurring trend. Like, I definitely, like, you know, Marty's minutes. Marty's minute where he gives us something great, like a minute that turns into an hour. I love that concept. I just don't want to, like, I'm glad we have something to tease that's not death related, hopefully. <laughs> right. Well, no, Jimmy's yeah. still alive. Right. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, Jimmy's I fine. Jimmy's fine, but I didn't know. Don't if give was, away too much. I didn't want to. I didn't want to yeah. step on the story if there was other death involved. I, just, just to be safe. I know the answer to this question, Martin, is going to be yes, but surely there's been a time where you thought, I'm worried about this dude. This guy's this fucking guy is not long for this world. Surely you've been around guys or maybe girls, bands you've worked with, but you were concerned for them, right? Because Chris was out of nowhere. I mean, Taylor was out of nowhere, just nowhere. Right. But I'm surely you've worked with people and thought, this dude, this dude needs to get his shit together. I'm sure you've seen that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's t- yeah. so how prevalent is it? Like my twins even asked me the other day in the car. Cause I was telling them about Taylor and they know how much I love the Foo Fighters. And by the way, I'm worried about Dave. That poor guy has gone through yeah. the death of Kurt and now he's got Taylor. I, I, oh, and, I, and Chris, I'm he was super I'm, close with Chris. Yeah, yeah. I'm concerned uh, for Dave and he's such a good dude and such a, always seems like he's in a good ass mood. Such, such a damn good rock and roll musician. Well, he's such an anchor to the culture at this. Yeah. Point. I just, I, I mean, hope he's brilliant. Have you read his book? No, I probably should. No, you, yeah. you need to, you need you, okay. Taylor. Come on. I you know. Yeah. I know. I know you got a lot going on, but that's one you need to read. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to write it down now then. That's my next book. Okay. I guess that's yeah, the timing. Too. I you'll worry about not like, I'm not worried about Dave's, Dave's health. I worry about whether or not Dave's going to go well, on and play more tunes. Listen, I, I worry so. about his health. I worry yeah, about his I mean, health. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I saw, um, I did see uh, Nine Inch Nails is going to fill a few of the tour dates that the Foo Fighters have pulled okay. out of now, which makes mm-hmm. me, I mean, that's, that's mm. completely understandable. But like you're saying now, like I, I, I 
start to think about like how long is that hiatus? Like, is it an elongated hiatus? Is it just for? Oh, uh, it could be. It, right. It, I, I, right. I kind of think it's going to be a long one. I don't know if yeah. they'll ever do it again. I think Dave will continue to make music. It's going to take a lot and have to be the right. Uh, like you know, if Matt Cameron would come and play for the Foo Fighters. That might work. It's going to take, you know, something like that. Um, somebody yeah, who was big super, feet to fill because those Matt big was shoes. super close with Taylor too. Like it's going to take somebody like that for it to work. I think it's going to be done for a while. I worry about Dave. Look, I've worried about Dave. I've been around Dave. He's one of these guys that is indestructible constitution. You know, and you see that, you see that out on the road. Um, and there's people that can just drink and smoke cigarettes and um, weed and not necessarily do drugs. That will get you down. But but Dave, Dave likes to drink, smoke cigarettes. I don't think he smokes weed, but that that's what he does. And he he he's just got this constitution, but he is... Whoops, my headphones came out. He's going nonstop, man. Yeah, yeah. He goes nonstop. He's not a guy that likes to sleep. Uh, not he doesn't do drugs. But are you guys there? Oh yeah, yeah, we're yeah, yeah, you're loud. Yeah, we're just okay. engaged. Yeah. yeah. I had to reconnect my headphones. But he I and I worry about Dave. I worry about Dave. But I think he's gonna be fine. He's got a great support system. Um he's an awesome guy, a loving guy. Um, we actually share management with with uh, with them. This guy, this guy Silva, Silva Management is is the chicks managers, and um, just a great support system. Great guys. Silva was back with Nirvana, and Dave's been around a long time. But I've been I've been with him, and and I've been like, dude, how do you do that? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. how do you function? And he does, but I think. I think he'll be all right. He's a strong guy. And as far as the foos playing again, again, I, I don't, I, that's a long way off. And I think it'd have to be somebody like Matt Cameron that would come back and do it. Or Dave would do it himself. But, that's you know, what, see, that's what I wonder as well. I mean, Dave played it. drums in his own band. That'd be yeah, so fucking amazing. I mean, it's Dave fucking Grohl. It would like, yeah, I, yeah. because I think back, you know, like for me, when, you know, Cobain passed and then Dave Grohl, like the first time I remember seeing Grohl post Nirvana was when he played drums for Tom Petty on SNL that night. Me too. Had, exactly. Right. Exactly. And, and he played the that? hardest fucking version of you don't know how it feels that how, you will ever fucking hear. Like, it's so awesome. Like I go back like this week, I've watched that Tom Petty with Dave Grohl playing drums, SNL footage probably Dude, 50 times because it's all i, I can so think about is just that. that cathartic just yeah. beating of uh, the drum i remember crying when i saw that as a 22 23 year old kid whatever it was 24 yeah yeah and when i saw when i saw Grohl playing on saturday night live for tom petty i freaking cried yeah yeah that's that's why and that's why i think you know because i remember hearing you know petty in an interview saying you know i had told dave like come into the studio you know come hang out with us let's just jam let's record some music and dave was already in the process of forming foo fight he's like you know I, i'm in like that's what i'm doing to handle this i'm i'm already trying to create something new yeah. i've got an idea i've got a concept and then you know tom was like well at least come play with me on snl i need a drummer anyway come mm -hmm. you know do that at least and so like I, I, as much as we sit here and say, like, I, 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 we, Steph and I were, you know, wasted the other night and I almost tweeted out, like, I hope Dave Grohl's okay. And then I thought, no, I'm going to get attacked for that. Like, I don't know the guy, blah, blah, blah. But that's what I think about. And then I think about, I mean, the man is, is uniquely prepared to handle this kind of trauma and thinking back to how he handled that trauma in the early mid nineties versus going through it a second time now. I mean, I, 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 I can't put myself in those shoes, but I know what I saw and I know how He's I saw seen, him handle it before. Listen, these guys have all seen a lot of sad shit. Trauma. Not, yeah. not only, not only with 
the lead singer of his band with Kurt. But before that, friends of theirs in Seattle. Uh, after Kurt, you know, Lane Staley was a the friend to Aaron everybody. Um, you know, all these guys from from Seattle have seen a lot. Not just Seattle, but um, especially those guys. Um, Dave's seen a lot. He's super resilient. He's super evolved as a human. It's fucking inspiring. Um, yeah, he's he's not normal. Uh, he's got superhuman strength mentally, physically. Um, he'll be all right, and it's just you know he'll he, he'll figure it out. But it's going to take some time. They those guys were super close, man. I can't. They were a lot know. closer than he and Kurt ever were. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, he was that's, a kid. He was still yeah. a kid. Yeah. yeah, he's grown up with Taylor. Is broke. Oh, I mean, and Kurt like, wasn't as accessible. Yeah, those right. guys were brothers, man. Right, I mean, right. Kurt yeah. just wasn't as accessible as as Taylor. I mean, um, yeah, it's a mm. it's a drag. Mm. Okay, I feel like I need to get us out of this. Yeah, little on ditch that here. note, pull us again. I don't want to pigeonhole Marty as just the guest that talks about <laughs> well, music, it's- like. Listen, hey, people are interested in that stuff, and I'm happy to talk about it. And no, and so you have other... unique insight for sure. I mean, Real insight, uh, not enjoy, bullshit and guessing. You guys You're right. About it. Thank you, man. No, my twins asked me the other night, and we'll move on. Like, Daddy, a lot of your favorite guys die. I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, what's the deal with that? Oh, what do you tell a 10 year old who asks you that? I don't. Has anyone in Pearl Jam ever died? No. Knock on the table. No. But they know a lot of guys, you know. I, I mean, it's like Ed just got done, you know. I mean, it's like every six months or less, you know. Mm-hmm. And anyway, I, yeah, so it's, I don't know what it's you tough. tell What do you tell a kid? It just sucks. Yeah, it just fucking it's sucks. It's life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's life. All right, so I'll, I'll do, want me to dance for the people and do something funny here? Please. Let's see. We could we, we could do Taylor's sack, LG, if you want to do that. Please. I could even step aside bitch. and let Oscar do it if he wanted me to, just to bring just to bring some levity. Mm, do you realize he's in the closet? Okay, time out. Time out. I haven't yeah. told you this. We yeah. had the chance to interview Oscar at 10 a.m. Texas time this morning. Why didn't you tell me? I would have gotten up at 5 a.m. to interview. I, no, and see, that's why actual I, Oscar. I made the executive decision. Are you serious? They we, asked us to. We, we, we let's Dude, have. Dude, what are you doing? Chris are you, do you want to evolve this show Dool. or not? With as much with as much shots as you take at the guy, you're not. You can't interview him. Yes, we I can. We can never run that audio. No, no, no. Fake Oscar would have asked real Oscar oh questions. Oh my god, that's what I was scared about. That was that's my what main, I need to get. What are you doing here? Oh my god, that's literally I'm, I'm, why I'm, I told. That's told. why I told our promotions department. No, we're good with we're good with the Oscar we have that joins us for interviews. Oh, face. you're killing me here. Well, now you know, so rip the Band-Aid right off. Oh, God. Fine. Hey, that's what uh, that's what I get paid to do as the producer of well, the you show. You produced, all right. I all right, well, you have, that same, you have that same clip from the other night, LG? You have that same picture, whatever I guess the word is? Uh, Two beers in now, so it's probably the best time to do interstitial imaging, I think, is yeah, the industry. Yeah, we need an interstitial. Jargon. So anyway, let's get into second. Taylor's sack. Brought to you by JM Pool and Spa. How about that? Uh, JM Pool and Spa are the official pool and spa providers of Thunderdome Live and the Taylor Thunderdome Familia. Uh, Poodle San Antonio people. Uh, Jorge was, Jorge, he goes by George, but he spells it with a J. I give him shit about that. He's George now. He's living in spring my branch. Dad, so call my me dad George, bro. spells it like George, but goes by Jorge. So it, it well, cuts, he goes to South America all ways. the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it cuts no, both ways. Call whatever it's your name. You do what you want, <laughs> Jorge. Uh, but no, he's your boy. He was born in the Valley, lives in San Antonio, and he is JM Pool Spa. They do everything you need with your pools. Having a pool is a pain in the ass if you're having to do all the cleaning and all the renovations and everything on your own. These boys will come in and fix your pool up. It's JM Pool Spa, renovation, automation, innovation, all the mations that come with having a pool in your house. JM Pool Spa is the dude. All right. Uh, I want to read some. Let's see. So should I do... 
buy me a coffee and give some shout outs to some Thunderdomers? Should sure. I do that, DJ? <laughs> Hey, Turn this into an actual yeah. program. Oh, well, let's, not, let's not get too crazy. <laughs> what if in two years I'm going to be all, I'm going to be an asshole and we're going to be less funny because I got to stay on format and pl please everybody. But right now we're having fun. All right, so let's see. Uh, LG, yes or no? You want Oscar to do these or not? Yeah, sure. Make sure to refresh that page too. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love his nonchalant um, way. Uh, hey, we don't have things. an we don't have an IFB feed in your ear, so I got to do it on the air. I it's like great. it. That's how we I that's how it. we roll, dude. That's how we roll, I man. It. I don't I don't. It's fine. All right. Well, do you have anything? Do you have a, you have a photograph that can help me stay in character longer? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what the fuck you and doing? Don't, that, hey, fuck you. Right hey, there. fuck you. Is why we didn't interview Oscar hey, at 10 a.m. this yeah, morning. You know what? That's it's a good why. thing. I'm, I'm happy you why. didn't call me. Fuck you. I'm not going to talk and to that piece you. of shit. I'm not going to go on his shitty ass radio show. He sucks. He, I don't, I'm not, I come to San Antonio. I don't, I want to talk to real Mexicans, not have breed pieces of shit like that to give me shit. Look how beautiful I am. You know, you want to make out with that guy right there. Shit. Don't act, don't act like you don't want to kiss me. You're an idiot. Hey, shout out to, uh, so, hey, shout out, uh, somebody wants Martin to flush the toilet to prove that he's in the bathroom. I bet he, uh, somebody has say, hey, Martin. What? Flush the toilet for funsies and prove you really, they don't believe Martin's in the bathroom. They want him to flush the toilet. What, did the towels in the background? <laughs> That's not, fucked up. Not <laughs> hey, <laughs> flush the toilet. We want to make sure it's in. Right, Look, hey, 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 Marty George is a Harrison. professional. He's trying to go into the room that has the most natural sound deadening devices. And now we're going to hey, sit I'm here so, and Hey, 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 I'm so on, cooked Oscar, up. I don't know the fucking, that. I don't know the difference. I'm so cooked up. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I want to. Oh, hi! I want to greet them for that. George Harrison now follows us. I oh, check it out. George Harrison subscribed to the show just now. What are they? That's that's gonna be hard for George Harrison to that's what follow I the show. Yeah, they got they, they got money. Yeah, Tulsa State Fair Skyride bought a coffee. Please save me from the Tulsa. Why is it? We have this weird fucking guy who listens to the show. He always talks about the Tulsa State Fair Skyride. Fuck off with that shit. I don't give a damn about the Tulsa State Fair. He's always trying to bring up the fucking Ferris wheel in Tulsa. <laughs> what the hell? I don't want to talk about Tulsa. Okay, there's Taylor Sack for the night. Back to Mike. I'm leaving. Goodbye. You know you want to kiss me. Suck my pump, bitch. Wait, Oscar, I wanted to add. Oh, I'm He's going now. Fuck you. Hey, look at my ass. One question. Only because you're tall. I bet you got a big penis. You get one question, go. Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to know if you had assistance in putting that outfit on because it looks like it looks like that would require help to get to all of that. That is so wrong. Man. It's so wrong, Marty, which again is why we did not interview him at 10 a.m. this morning. Executive I, I, I decision. Still disagree. I think executive it was a poor decision. decision. I don't agree, but it's fine. Bet You're, your ass I'm gonna, that was gonna, an executive decision. I'm going to go with what you say and trust your judgment, but I would have loved to have gotten up. Honest to God, no bullshit. I wouldn't have been able to do it. Not without some heads up because I had the kids here. I can't get my kids up at 4 a.m. and go interview Oscar at 5 a.m. Our my time here. No, no. And that but had I had had I had a day's notice, I would have figured it out. I would have hired a homeless guy to come in here and babysit them or something. <laughs> The interview Oscar De La Hoya, honest, dude. How much of a difference would the homeless guy be than you? I mean, let, let's just, I mean, like, he'd, he'd, no, he'd, I should have done he'd, it. He could do should've all done the staples, it. yeah. JB no, Meredith's in here. Keep Martin as a mainstay. He's the most interesting guy in the world. He's very interesting oh, for sure. Man. It's hard to argue against that. Woolcord, nice tattoo. I have the goddamn Dallas Cowboys logo on my shoulder. Oh, Woolcord, what are you <laughs> doing? Unfortunate. God well, hold on, hold on. If you got that tattoo in 96, that's a badass Still tattoo. No. Still no. Nah. What? You would you, you would you get the would you get that Rangers T on your shoulder you if they win the World Series? You bet your ass. You bet your I will but Why don't you just do it then? You why do they have to win right the now? The week after the Rangers win their first World Series ever, I will get this block no. Texas T somewhere okay. on my body. He says that was confidence because he knows it'll not that happen in his lifetime. That will be my first tattoo. Okay, I'll do the They're Texas. Never out, I'll do the Texas State outline on my elbow like Clint Dempsey. 
and then I'll get like the Rangers you know, rock tea right above it. When I first moved here, man, the Rangers were in the World Series two years in a row, but they had a, a drug addict for a coach. Oh, okay, minor DJ. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, wait. The, wait, the and, drug addict. And right they were, hold on. I, the I, drug I, addict as the fan. coach or the really... drug addict as the MVP center fielder? Which drug Both. addict are we talking Both. about? Both. Okay, Both. all right. I'm Both. sorry. I get them. It's uh, it's still it's still real to me, damn it. That's that wound is okay. still fresh. He's copping out, Marty. Because he knows the Rangers are years away from winning the World Series. That's not true. We've got we oh, got God. they've added two more playoff teams to what the hell? They've got they've added two more playoff teams this year. I think we have a chance at a wild card. <laughs> I'm gonna keep Fine. telling myself that until I like we get your to mid June. Thank you. I got it in uh, Cooperstown, actually, at an antique shop right outside of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Yeah. If you're such a Rangers fan, why do you need them to win the World Series? Just go get the logo now. Well, yeah, just, totally. I mean, I, I'm not a tattoo enthusiast. I have a bit of a no. germophobia <laughs> this when it comes no, to this ink goes back on to my body. I, mean, I don't believe in putting a team logo on your body. I mean, if, if I to each his own, I, I wouldn't I, do I, I don't disagree. I'm, I'm I, Marty's, a, Marty's See, an Eagles guy. They won the Super Bowl not long ago. You didn't go run out and get the, the Eagles first Super Bowl, logo yeah. on your Absolutely head. not. Yeah, yeah. No. See, no. I don't. That's my problem with tattoos in general. There's not like your tattoo is extremely personal. And it's also really, you know, trendy, cool. I mean, it's George Harrison lyrics, but it's also really personal connection with your, with your, uh, you know, off your, your offspring. Your sure, you, my scions. Exactly, scions. Thank there you go. You. Yes, I'm that's incredible. Scions. It really right. isn't. It, See, and that's boys. the reason I don't have even one yet is because there's nothing that I have mentally been able to accept as. This is so important to Worth me. Worth putting I on want my it body. Correct. It's get, so important yeah, yeah, yeah. to me. I want it on my body yeah. for everyone to see forever. Right. And it took my kids getting comparable tattoos to even get me get, put that idea in my head. Otherwise, I would have yeah. never thought of doing that. I keep you know? telling the roommate if she'll get a big puma <laughs> with roommate. my face on it on her ass cheek, I'll get one on the matching ass cheek. But to this day, she hasn't accepted my offer. So I'm She's still. Nuts. That's a that woman is not ever. See again, you, you ask the impossible. She's not doing well, that. Yeah. She asked me. Nobody why does. I, nobody's doing that. That's I mean, no, she that's does probably, that. came up she's with it. That's probably going to come point. to her senses and dump your ass at hey, some point anyway. So right, why would she do up. that? We've been here an hour <laughs> and a half. Roommate. It's time to go. Time to go. We're done. <laughs> yeah, it has been an hour and a half. Love you guys. All right, dude. So Thanks what's again, your Marty. schedule? How long are you in Pennsylvania? When are you heading out to California? When are you back home? Oh, I head back to Texas tomorrow. And then I head okay. to LA. I head to LA on Tuesday. Okay. Uh, I'll basically be in Los Angeles the rest of April and May. I come home a few weekends here and there. Um, okay. But we're out there rehearsing. And then I'll be home the end of May until June 5th. Basically, okay. you're hitting the road, you know, and then we hit the road, yeah. um, start doing shows. So, but I'll, dude, I'm always here for you guys. And anytime you, you want to arrange it, we can do some cool shit from, you know, I can be sitting at the, the mixing desk or where, wherever, you know, the bus. Okay. The yeah, bus. yeah. Yeah. Dude, oh, I, I, yeah. Dude, I, no bullshit. There's a lot of I mean, shit to talk about. Cool. And again, no BS, man. I mean, I, I, I want to have you on a lot, but like, if you wind up like, you know, in, in a studio somewhere with some, you know, and want to solo some cool shit, just let me know. And I'll just, we'll just make, we'll just have you on. Even if it's 10 minutes, just to, Oh, look what Martin's doing. They're getting ready. They're, they're rehearsing or whatever. That'd be sweet, man. I'd love that. And I'd love to help you promote the tour. So whatever. Well, dude. but does that, the, uh, yeah. And, and that's awesome. But does that have to be at a certain time or I, I don't understand what you mean? Like, well, I can't, well, I mean, it would be, yeah, to do it live would be the best. Like, let's say you're being, so you'll be in LA, LA's two hours behind Texas. We do our stuff at seven fifty, eight fifteen normally. So six fifteen in LA, would that work on occasion? Yeah. Anything works on occasion. Yeah. I mean, right, even okay, if cool. you had canned footage of something you had, we could still How do I do that? You guys need to get with me. I, I Perfect. Got okay. I, I got Perfect. Great, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get you. Tons LG's of your dude. Okay. We'll get, we'll, we'll, okay, LG's, LG's your dude. It'd be cool to see some stuff. We'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah I'll, LG, I'll, LG's, LG's you know. the guy for that. <laughs> I'll send LG videos of tons of shit. And he oh, can yeah. Hell yeah. 
Hell yeah, yeah. We'll just make the chicks the official band of Thunderdome Live. I don't give a damn. Why not? I mean, I'm why not? Looking forward to hearing that new album. Well, live. And, and <laughs> yeah, I can well. find old. I can find old clips of Live Soundgarden from my perspective. Oh like God, that, you no. know. Now we're yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. Now, All okay, right. yeah, I'll, 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 me and LG, LG will work on some content. The, the yeah, only yeah, thing yeah. we got to look out for with that old concert footage stuff is copyright strikes for music. Yeah, see, on this YouTube. is why LG's. <laughs> this is why LG's no fun. I'm, I'm a little worried about, about the legal. Uh, t- yeah, yeah. Sorry, oh, yeah. I got to put my suit on. I'm a little oh, worried about oh. the video we played the earlier too. That, that Martin had the shot music. himself. If Martin shoot, if Martin has some old video that he shot with his cell phone, he's telling you you can do it, right? That works. Yeah, as long as well, YouTube as long as the algorithm doesn't recognize the co- the the copyrighted music, algorithms, yeah, we're good. algorithms don't recognize personal. Yeah, but we'll figure it out. We'll it make it work. To, and if not, yeah. if we get a strike, I'll still get tons of. Yeah. I still have tons of cool shit. I can yeah, have yeah, those yeah. guys. Let's do it. I got. I mean, I got f- photos and videos of all kinds of cool shit that that, that won't infringe copyrights. Let's do okay. it. Hell I mean, yeah. even if it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're fine. Anyway. We'll get around it. Mark yeah, knows what if we shit? cared yeah. about copyrights? Yeah, but, hey, yeah, you can no, always yeah. apologize yeah. later, you know? Hey, what the fuck? Copyright? Yeah. That sounds like my... That's, nah, fuck that. I don't give a shit. We, 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 <laughs> let them come after us. We're a fledgling little show. No one watches. We're yeah, fine. Exactly. <laughs> what, are you, what are you attacking? All Look right. at us. Well, Look it, at this. If Oscar's Thanks people come after me, then I'll start worrying. Okay, yeah. Now, if Oscars, if Oscars people start coming after us, then I'm distancing. because I'm not. F that you, guy. He's, you can a, he's own an ass. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Martin. Thank you, homie. I know it's getting late on the East right, Coast. Love dude. you guys, man. Lot, man. All right, you, brother. All right, take care, LG. Martin. All right. All right, later, guys. All, All right, right, boys. That's it, guy. We went a long ass time. I just I could talk to that dude about tunes all day, man. That was such awesome. Thank cool you, to Martin Strait. Yeah. God, he's such a cool dude. All right, thank you, Martin, very much. Uh, I guess we should wrap up, boys. We'll do this next Tuesday again. That was and a we do show. have two we good. two kick ass we have two kick ass announcements next week that I'm stoked about possibly at we least do one. at least one and neither one uh, of them involved oh, my yeah, father yeah, yeah. so let's neither one involved correct. your father no uh, one for sure can I give can I give Puma a hint sure you need to brush up on your bull ride knowledge boy ooh okay let's go. Okay. Look at, him, look at him pretend that he doesn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I'm doing great. I'm doing right, great. Right. Yeah. Okay. Until cool. you... All right, right on. The yeah. other one is tentative still, LG? I, just need to, I need to make sure I get everything changed by Tuesday. Okay. To it's make, def- to make it's, those it's, things happen. It's, yeah. Oh, it's okay. Definitively, Let's go. It's definitively going to happen, but maybe even by Tuesday. How about that? Yeah. Possibly. Let's see what I can do this by weekend Tuesday. to Possibly. speed things up. All right. Yeah. Like here's the thing, and I know right now we've been on the air this long. Anybody watching us is just hardcore Thunderdome. Uh, bu- no bullshit. Thank you guys very much for supporting this thing. And look, we've got like fucking sponsors and stuff. And yep, this yep. is we're out doing this. We're hustling. I'm I'm hustling. I never got into this business to be a salesman. I'm You're a skilled ass. I'm talent. I just I get paid to talk. <laughs> I'm going to put these head, his headphones on every day. <laughs> I never thought I'd be out hustling business. And I've, I've learned a whole new respect for doing that in these last couple of months. And I, so it's like, I've always appreciated anybody that supported our show, but now that I, I'm like the one out talking to folks and we're having fucking meetings and we have zoom meetings and stuff, it means a lot to me. So I, I no bullshit, Texas cheer liquor and R and R and, um, uh, Jay and pool and spa. I mean, and who knows who's, who's, who's next hint, hint, yep. wink, wink. And it's just, it means a lot. Cause we're just getting this thing up and running and I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll take this thing as far as we can while we're doing it. You know, I have every intention of moving home at some point. I have 10 year old twins who live here. And so I don't know when that will be. Um, who knows? Maybe it's sooner than I hope. I think if, I'm a big believer in putting, I don't even know why I'm talking about this. I'm a big believer in putting positive energy into the ether. I'm a believer in speaking things into the truth. And while I don't have any idea how I will get home, I I think if, if I'm able to get back home, I think our show would be a lot more successful uh, just from a content yeah. point of view because I'll be home every day. And we can just put content on there all the time. 
in addition to these Thunderdome live shows we do, we can just put a bunch of goofy shit like me at the tattoo parlor, or me and Puma going to a bar and playing cornhole or whatever and stuff, hiking, whatever. We um, know who wins I have, cornhole. I win cornhole. I'm fucking, I'm from well, Fort Worth, Texas. I kick for the ass record, at cornhole. I won the you only sanctioned cornhole event we've actually participated in. I let in. you win so I could keep oh, the Oh, is that going. your narrative yeah. now? Cool. Yeah, well, I didn't want to sweep you. I let you win the 40 so you wouldn't be embarrassed <laughs> by someone 6'4", 230 beating you at a 40-yard right. no, the, the footage all right, of all the this point. to be released soon. Shortly. See? Shit like that. We could be doing that all the time. I have every intention of coming home. It's just a matter of when and whether or not it makes sense for my twins and what they're doing, what their mother's doing. I just don't know, but we're going to make this work as long. We're going to, it doesn't matter if I want, if I move home in a year, five years or two weeks, I want this show to work and to have the three supporters and have dudes that an hour and a half are still watching us blows my fucking mind. And I appreciate that very much. So as long as somebody cares and we've got support, we're going to yep. keep doing this and we're just going to make it work. No matter where I'm at, we're going to make this shit Speaking work. Speaking of support, uh, the official yeah. artist of Thunderdome is in here. Marty Leal just bought us two coffees. Oh, oh thank you, Marty. Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. We showed off your tweet earlier, dude. I don't know if you saw it, but it was so very was cool. And, yeah. He's been so I think it lately with artwork, from he's Spurs, been destroying by the way. Yeah, his Josh Primo. Murray and his Primo. Holy yeah, shit. This, yeah. He's, he's Something so called great, S. Irvin is in here with three coffees saying that he'll pay for Puma's butt tattoo. Hey, all right. Hey, did you hear that? He Steph? won't do it. He Steph won't do it. You hear that, Staff? Or is that loud ass, ass redneck voice? Yeah, you hear that Staff. Hey. She God. just said, uh oh, now I got to do it. So uh, book the appointment. We're in. All right, well, book it. Who's going to pay for it? Who said they uh, would? Uh, something called S. Irvin. S. Irvin. S. Irvin. All right, well, show mm. us the money. He'll do it. Dude, you better not put that shit out there unless you mean it because this guy's probably serious. <laughs> Line them up. It's not me. It's her that has to. She has to agree to do it, and then I'll do it. And you're going to have to prove you did it. Oh, fuck. She just said, if anyone wants to pay for it, I'm in. Well, there you okay, go. dude. Uh, okay. All right, hold distant. We got to wrap up. We got stars. Uh, see, hey, it's it's last bust. four minutes of the stars game. Come on, let's get out of here. Come we on. Finish. Look at that. Come What's on. the score? Are, are we winning? Are I don't think winning? we are, Bubba. I don't think we oh, are. No. I, I think because I think the stars are losing, and I'm staring at a big fucking puma tattoo on my ass cheek. So and it's you're gonna have time to prove to it too. You got to prove you got it. You know, the only way to prove it is to show it. Yep. It's Basically, Portal Chapter 2 is what you're telling All me. Right. Yeah. Uh, people bitched for 10 years that our show didn't and ever had any merch. We do now. We have a lot of merch. So go to loveyouhardtv.com and click on the merch page. Thank you, David. Bought us 10 hey, coffees. How about that? Speaking of Marty, give us permission yeah. to use that Come On Now Spurs design, and we'll throw that on there, too. Oh, that'd be kick-ass. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody just bought 10 coffees. Y'all see that? That's kick-ass. Yeah. Thanks, um, David. David? buy merch thank Hell you david yeah. go to good merch dude. it's uh go to loveyouhardtv.com and click on merch and buy all the merch you want we just sent a guy a, a, a thunderdome drinking bottle today a water That's, bottle that is one of a kind by the way yeah nice. yeah it's the only it's the first yeah, one we've made is, ever ever yeah. ever it is not for sale so. Oh, that's oh, never mind. We'll get a hoodie. Yeah, you can get a coffee yeah, cup. Get a hat. Yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah, every yeah, now and hat, then, yeah, cup. every now and then, I think we'll we'll come up with some exclusive merch. Oh, I like that. That, we, that yeah. is not for sale. That we can kind of just give out to the people here and there. You know, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I like that's it. That's cool. That's cool. All right, so I'll be home in a couple of weeks for just a couple of days. So if anybody plans on going to that gala or showing up to our breakfast, we're going to have that morning. Um, I, I'm I'm excited to see folks and especially thunder numbers that have supported that radio show all these years that now that are now watching these damn YouTube shows. And it, it, it's really, really cool and special to me. And it means a lot to me. Believe me, I, I never take it for granted. And to be able to do stuff like this for a living is, you know, yeah, that's it. Anyway, go stars. That's it. That's enough. I give it, I've had two beers and y'all, y'all know how I get when I drink. I'm a lover. Oh God, you had a second beer. We got to get out of here before this what, turns what into time a is it virtual. It's, it's not even like six o'clock yet, is it? Dude, it's, it's like 4 p.m. over there. 4.59 p.m. I'm going to have to take a nap. <laughs> get some Start rest. my day over. Uh, All right, thank you, fellas. Love you hard. Go to the nude beaches. Oh, I've already been several times. We're good. That's old news. That's old news. All right, that's it. We're done. Thank I mean, you, everybody. Uh, Tuesday night. in Austin anyway.
I'll no, the ones here are way better. The ones here are way says better. He'll pay. I might get a. Ta- I might have a Puma tattoo on my ass cheek. And he bought month. five coffees. Thank Fuck. you, yes, sir. Love you, homie. All right. Tuesday night, we'll see you boys on the radio tomorrow. Tuesday, big announcements. Love you hard. We'll see you later. Come back, you puppy. Thunderdome Live is presented by Texas Cheer Liquor.